The Belt and Road Initiative does several things that nobody reports about in the newspapers. The first thing, it's a branding operation for what the Chinese have already built in terms of asphalt roads, railways, oil and gas pipelines across Central Asia to get at the gas from Turkmenistan, the oil from Kazakhstan, so that China is less dependent on the Strait of Malacca, which is narrow and vulnerable for oil deliveries. So it's a branding operation for what has already been accomplished, essentially. Second thing it is, it linked these pathways across Central Asia link China with Iran. And Iran, with a population of 80 million, highly educated, fronting not just one hydrocarbon-rich region, the Persian Gulf, but two, the Caspian Sea, is the organizing principle of both the Middle East and Central Asia. And China is investing heavily in Iran. It's building railways in Iran. It's, um, it's, it's mining for minerals in Iran. Uh, the Chinese-Iranian relationship is becoming deeply organic. And China plus Iran is an unbeatable combination in Eurasia. And the, and the state that loses out the most is Russia. And we'll get to that later. Because China is beating the pants off Russia in former Soviet li Russian lingua franca speaking Central Asia and is poised to you know, infiltrate into the Russian Far East while Putin is obsessed with, with, with the West. Um, I, don't, I, I never bought the argument that Putin's a great strategist or tactician at all. Um, all right, the other thing uh, One Belt, One Road is, it's, um, it, it's a way to deal with China's internal demons. And one of the biggest of those demons are the Muslim Turkic Uyghur minority in Western China. And this is a minority that is Muslim, that does not feel itself part of Han China. The Chinese are very worried about. Um, so what China does is what One Belt, One Road accomplishes is it deepens China's relationship with these other Turkic Muslim states to the west of the Uyghurs. So the Uyghurs can never use them as, in a, rear, as a rear base in any future imaginable insurgency. The second thing it does, because it's in, the Uyghurs live in western China, one Belt, One Road is economically developing Western China. So the Uyghur standard of living can rise. And as a result, there may have you know, less of an incentive to, you know, uh, uh, to rebel in future years and decades. So One Belt, One Road does, does all of these things. Um, again, this is a process that's happening in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm.